thing is going on. Because they, 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 they traced this thing from the Taliban. Now this shit is about John Muhammad. Right. Mm -hmm. and the first thing they said was, well, the day they caught him, they said, well, we know that he was, uh, he was upset. And, and you know, they got, there's this group that in America, and here they real slick motherfucker yeah, now. Real. There's a group in America, and they have been um, uh, getting these black people that's, that's frustrated. They've been putting them in, uh, introducing them into Islam. Everybody knows, first of all, Islam, of Islamized Muhammad and Nation of Islam, is different from the Islam of the East as a hog from the moon. As a matter of fact, the East don't even recognize the particular, uh, uh, that particular day. Everybody knows that history. First, the history of the Nation of Islam, they ain't never killed nobody, no, black, no, no, no white folks. It's been a peaceful organization. You see what I'm saying? They said, well, you know, there's this new group. They, they, you know, trying to make out like, this is a new phenomenon. First of all, the Nation of Islam uh, has been in operation since November the 22nd, 1931. You see what I'm saying? 1931. So, here it is. They, you see, they can play this whole thing because they figure that there are most people that don't study and don't know anything, they think it's the same form of Islam. Remember that last year they chased, they traced the, the little Taliban white boy. Back to Malcolm X. You see, back to Malcolm X. So there's a reason why they do these particular things. Um, I take for instance, um, so they want to say that uh, these particular people, there's all on the news, these particular people, they are frustrated and they want to get into this particular thing. I'm like, come on now. Nobody that we nobody's frustrated. And he had he, he's worried about what they was doing to the people, to the Taliban. We don't even know what the fuck the Taliban was until somebody told us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You see what I'm saying? So the whole concept, and I traced this thing. They they said he was in a homeless shelter. They talked to one of the guys at the homeless shelter. He said, I called a cop. They were like, well, why would you call the cops on a person that's in your homeless shelter? Did do anything wrong? The guy said, I thought it was very odd for a person to be in my homeless shelter and was able to get on a plane and fly to the East Coast anytime he wanted to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about government assassins. Yes. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Now look at this. They said that him and the little boy, because I think he was bumping that little boy too. Yeah. Yeah. He said that he going to that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, one sister from Chicago made this observation. She said, well, they said he came down this summer and he wasn't, they wasn't feeding the little boy nothing but honey and crackers, right? Mm -hmm. But this is what they say now. We talk about MK Ultra. We talk about mind control. See the movie Manchurian Candidates. Sure. They, this guy could get a phone call and just get a phone call and go out and kill all the people he want to kill. Yes, so here it is. He got the little boy under mind control, supposedly. And they say based on MK Ultra. If they got you under mind control, you got to have a strict diet. Because if you eat the wrong thing, you can throw up the mind control. So they said they got him on crackers and honey. Got him on crackers and honey. See how that goes? So, so, um, so the key here is, you got to decode all the words. We need to find out what, what Malho means. And we, we decoded it last night. was what, um, what was it? Mal is the same as male, which means black in Greek. The word look get get uh, Robert Gray's Greek myths and see the word um see, uh, see the word um um see the word uh, uh, male and they have all these words for male and all of them means black. Then you get the word vote, which vote means to go. So that's black move move black or something like that. Now everything is everything. Yes, sir. Always the code shit. When they pick these people, you see what I'm saying? So now, that's one scenario that this cat here is the government assassin. The other scenario is, is how the hell are they going to have helicopters, police cars, and everything, and this motherfucker just dead asleep. <laughs> well, one thing also, too, if you shut a person down on mind control, you can have them sleep till you come mm -hmm. and, um, till you come and, um, tell and, and wake them up. You see what I'm saying? And all you can have them sleep till you come and wake them up and all. And all. So, um, that's one thing. But my point here is, it could very well be, it could very well be that um, they didn't do it. You see what I'm saying? You got to 
them, you got to weigh all these things. Right. You see what I'm saying? And they didn't do it. Because my point here is, is like they say, we, you, you see four off shots. They show one four off shot of the guy getting out the van. Mm -hmm. John Muhammad, they show one four off shot of the other guy getting out the van. But you notice when most black people do shit, they can't keep it. They got the camera all over their face. We haven't seen these people. And you don't know who they might give you. They might just say, look, now, could, could be like this, job well done. Uh, and then, um, then they can, um, what they can do here is, they got a lot of people on death row that they can trade off and execute. Mm -hmm. And you don't, you don't, you just don't know how they do things. Right. But my point here is, my point here is, they made sure, they made sure that this thing went on for three weeks before they decided to stop it. Now, this is one of the keys. They voted for the war while this was going on. Mm -hmm. A week later, they signed an act of war while it was also going on. They signed an act of war while it was also going on. You see what I'm saying? Uh, they had everything in place on what they wanted to do. Now, it's, and I just find this kind of ironic here. For three weeks, you don't know shit. They was thinking this was some Russian professional, this and that. You know, you know, they said these guys are toying with the cops. They're, you know, we don't know who they are and stuff like that. And when you go get the movies, uh, 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 Western Snipers is literally toying with the cops. But all of a sudden now, as soon as they catch them, these are the dumbest motherfuckers in the world. Right? <laughs> oh, they were not smart at all. You know what I'm saying? That, that, you know, that's just like the whole thing last year with 9-11. You know, the year, the, before they did it, before they hit the building, nobody knew nothing. All of a sudden, the next day, they know everybody grandmama's stupid. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You see, so it's just the same thing here. All the week, the three weeks going on, they don't know nothing. They know this shit is just scripted like Hollywood. They don't know nothing. Oh, it's mysterious. That's to give the fear. Right. All right? Then as soon as they catch him, this motherfucker Gilligan. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. As soon as they catch him, he Gilligan. Mm -hmm. This is stupid as hell. You know that this is some stuff I'm trying to tell you. So, the key here is, like we say again, like we say again, um, uh, the whole concept here is, is obviously they are trying to, obviously they are trying to, uh, um, so, uh, like I said, you know the rules now, some sisters come in, y'all brothers gonna ask the seats. We've been doing this for 10 years now, so you know how it go now. And it's any brother want to ask a seat. They got seats, we got two seats over here. Okay, so y'all, you know. What well, however you want to do? Wag the dog. Yeah. It's just a swag the dog. Okay, what well, okay. Yeah, so uh but this is interesting here. Uh, <coughs> that it would become a black person named Elijah Muhammad. The word John is Hebrew for Elijah. You see what I'm saying? Now, that's not by accident that three weeks, or two weeks, three weeks before it started, or two weeks before it started, they got this thing about black conscious groups being under attack in the Cleveland newspaper. And they got what? Khalid Muhammad's new Black Panther Party. Mm. And they say that these people have been under attack since 9 11. Mm. Okay? Now, that's one aspect. The other aspect is, you got this senator, what's his name, son, what's the guy's name? The senator that died? Wellstone. 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 What's his name? Paul Wellstone. Wellstone. Paul Wellstone. He dies. But remember now, that Friday that Ken Bridges got killed, and they were talking, they were voting on this particular bill, this guy stands up and says, if you go to war with Iraq, there will be something wrong with this country for a long time. There will be something wrong with this country for a long time. So here he goes again. This guy is a Jew. Now, Iraq is supposed to be the enemy to the Jews. You see what I'm saying? The enemy to Israel. Supposedly. Now this guy is a Jew. So all of a sudden, he's a traitor. See, he did that little shit to a couple of white, other white folks. He probably would have lived, but he done fucked over them Jews now. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? And like I said, in, in uh, Richard Pryor told him, Lord, don't you go around and fuck with them Jews, but I don't mind. Yeah. You know that? So, <laughs> next thing we know, they say he's the last liberal, America's last liberal. So what they do, they put him in a twin engine jet. They say he didn't even want to go. But it was something he had to do. They put him in a twin engine jet, take him up in the air, his wife and his daughter, and kill all of them because the wife could take his place in Congress had she lived. So they killed all of them. You see what I'm saying? Now any fool you know, any time you stand up against the damn government, they will, they used to, in the sense, take down whole airlines <laughs> just to uh, get one person. Yeah. So you know damn well not to get on no motherfucking crop dust. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know damn well not to get on no crop dust and you don't sit up there and talk shit against Bush's plan. <laughs> you see, that's all a part of it and they did it. They caught Malvo one day and John Muhammad one day, the next day this guy plane fall right out of the sky. Remember, they've been killing people like that for the long, longest. Yep. With the whole Ron Brown thing and that whole thing. Mickey Lever and all these particular people. John Kennedy. You see, and as a result, they said that the whole tide of the Congress, he was the key man to balance it out. And the whole Congress was based on this one person. And the whole Congress went for public. Mm -hmm. You see how that goes? So they took him out doing the whole thing. This is all this stuff is key. Now, check this out. Going right along. <coughs> Uh, you got to have a good memory to understand what is going down. Next thing we know, your boy Jam Master J yeah. gets killed from Run DMC. Now, if anybody know the history of rap, first one you had is Fat Back Band, King Tim the Third, did that yeah. one. That yeah. came out, uh, it was the first one, a couple months later, the Sugar Hill Gang come, comes out. But rap up until 1994, 93, 94 was still a fad until it passed the multi-platinum level. And the first person to hit multi-platinum levels was what? Run DMC. Run DMC. And the music genius behind Run DMC was who? Jam Master J. You see? And up until that, it set the catalyst for the multi-platinum stage that rap has been on to this day. See what I'm saying? And the man behind that, well, the pioneers behind that was Run DMC. Well, let's take that. One brother Run DMC, his voice is fucked up, so he can't do nothing no more. The other one's a damn preacher. Right. But then again, the, the man who put the cuts together, right. you see what I'm saying, is the man that was in the, still in the studio. So they go in and they kill him because they never forget. Why is this? Now, why? So, and from that, they, they held the stage from. 1994 to 98, to 1984 to 1988. So from, from 19, excuse me, from 1979 uh, uh, to 1983, it was a fad. Then it went multi-platinum with Rome DMC. Mm -hmm. And then right after that you had LL Cool J, you had the uh, establishment of Def Jam Records, and this thing started just snowballing. Mm -hmm. By 1990, it had basically eclipsed R&B, but it eclipsed R&B in the Spring of 1984, for the first time, knocked R&B off its pedestal. And it was Ron DMC that did it. That also fused in the whole rock and roll thing, was the first people to successfully fuse in the rock and roll thing with Aerosmith in 1986. You see what I'm saying? And they was only dethroned in 88, right after doing the movie Trouble and Leather or whatever, and the last one, they started declining. But the key here is they were one of the pioneers. They were one of the pioneers, well, what does all this mean? Remember I was telling you that the realm that uh, Walter F. Otto talks about in his book Dionysus, that the realm that's supposed to be reestablished is the Bacchanalian realm, which is you throw off all forms of, of uh, moralism. And basically, you go through a new form of revolution and liberation based on ecstasy. And a new thought process where you don't deal with these moral laws that keep you in bondage to this particular society or any other society. So there will be a new race of people that will come that will throw off the chains of, of, of shutting down their godhood based on they would enter into the new Bacchanalian realm or they call it the realm of madness. 
which is a metaphysical realm. This is all metaphysical. Now, don't, if you don't understand it, the government understands it. Well, if we look at basically us now, we're basically more Christian than we are ever. Because they work around the clock from 96 on in to make you reestablish you as being Christian with all these crap dollars and the rest of them shit. And remember, your boy did the work on crap dollar. Um, your boy, what's his name? Azariah out of New York. And it said, crap flow, which means create a flow of dollars. <laughs> and that's what he does. He creates a flow of dollars. So crap flow dollar. And in and, and etymology, he said, you know, why does they come out with some shit like that? You see. So the key here is, we're Christian now, but the Bacchanalian realm did hit. It's coin, if you want to say a carefree realm of this Dionysian energy, which is the Christ energy, it would have to be, un, without a shadow of a doubt, the hip-hop world. The hip-hop world is the Bacchanalian realm. It is the world realm that they are scared of because these motherfuckers don't give a shit about nothing. Right. You see what I'm saying? So in so many words, that's why they work around the clock to try to put that Christian shit up in there. So fool Mace ass to stop making millions to go become a preacher, and they got all these people. They've been trying to make that Christian rap for the wrong. It just don't, it, it was never a part of that. That's why I keep trying to make Christians out of fucking George Clinton. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It ain't gonna jail. Because that's not George Clinton. Right. That's not part of that fucking death. You see what I'm saying? So the so the so, so the Bacchanalian realm. Uh, uh, the Bacchanalian realm, they were trying to uh, Christian, uh, Christianize rap, but the shit didn't work. So they said, well, fuck it. This realm is going so powerful, this take, it is taking over the world. That is the Dionysian realm. Damn, we can't stop this shit. Well, the best thing we can do is we can put a white boy at the head of the motherfucker. Right. Eminem, mm -hmm. get that bastard moving. Mm -hmm. right. They say, okay, they created this Christ realm, right. we'll put the white motherfucker up there as the head. That's right. Now, Eminem is just as big as any rapper in the world today. Right. That's right. So the crowd say, can't beat them, join them. They say, this particular realm here is so popular. Now, you know damn well. Now, you got to know that I got to take my hat off of this shit. There's nothing on the world stage that is bigger than hip-hop music. Nothing. In the history of the world, in the history of commercial music, there has never been nothing that has gripped the entire globe. Lo and behold, that's almost like a ghetto takeover. Yes, sir. <laughs> you see what I'm Whether you like it or not, you see what I'm saying? It might not be a lot of people's error, but you got to admit that they have never had a phenomenon down to motherfucking white people in elementary school, to fucking the Chinese. Yes, sir. To Britain. Remember I was telling you, the brother, we had the two sisters came from came from, came from from Britain in 98, and they were saying, over there, if you if, if you a DJ, you have to study black slang and vernacular. You have to study how to sound black. If you don't, you don't get the fucking gig. Mm -hmm. So they got black people in Britain from the Caribbean <laughs> that sit in the house all day long and study black slang so they can get jobs as DJs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, five minutes. You see what I'm saying? So they can study this thing. They say because that, they, 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 they hear hot praise it's taken over all of Europe, Asia, Africa, all that shit. Mm. It's the biggest phenomenon ever. That is the Bacchanalian realm. They look and say, oh shit, this shit got out of hand. Yeah. It's the hip hop of this the damn shit. Mm. Right. And what they're doing? Wine, women, and song. Yes, sir. Because the Bacchanalian realm is free love, free sex, get your freak on, get your high on, and get your music on. And they got all that shit in that damn hip hop stuff. Yeah. Yes, Check out a Jay Z video. <laughs> that shit ain't nothing but origin. Yes, but that's the Bacchanalian realm that they was talking about that will one day come back into order and stuff like this. Raise your hand when it, when it comes, when it leaves and stuff. So, so as a result, you got to kill the pioneer. Right. And that's what run these, that's what J Master J. Right. That's why they took him out because if you trace it back, there was no phenomenon in rap that's bigger in the 80s. They ruled the 80s. Run DMC, that was it. You see what I'm saying? Well, as they became the, the, the sports superstar, you didn't have a damn sneaker deal. Yes, sir. Right. Adidas was forced to give them a fucking sneaker deal. You see what I'm saying? That's it? Okay. Let him take, change that. Keep rolling. You have a question here?
Yes, Blockbuster. Which space is it? Uh, found a guy here, though. Uh, uh, this is the this side here is the juice bar. The other side has everything from African clothing, artifacts, incense, books, and all. So this is uh, Mutana is a cultural center on the rise right here. Uh, uh, you know, in this particular area here. So we want to give a shout out to the place that's having an event. But anyway, like I said, there's been nothing bigger than the hip hop nation. Nothing. And they have tried to topple this thing for the longest. Now, the brother just made a point that in the movie, in the Matrix, about the white rabbit, and they said, "What well, follow the white rabbit?" I'm in the movie, mm -hmm. and then they said, "What? Well, now, what, what's the connection with, with Eminem and the white rabbit?" Mm -hmm. in, in the movie, mm -hmm. his, name his name is Rabbit. Follow the white rabbit. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because lo and behold, if we would have thought ten years ago that a white boy would be the head. Up there in the pop, the hip hop, you picked this shit right on the people's nose. You see what I'm saying? And this stuff is by design. And all of a sudden, he got a movie. You see what I'm saying? He got a movie. And if you notice, the, some of the movies that they showed with some of the other hip hoppers, like the boy Method Man and the little comedy stuff, his shit is a dramatic role. Mm -hmm. But he's trying to climb up. Now, all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden, the, the, uh, the, 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 the plight of black people, all this hell we catch and trying to raise up through hip hop, a white boy gets to tell that damn story. Right. You know what I'm saying, ain't that a bitch? Yeah. Hip hop is mainstream, like KRS1 said, hip hop is one of the few things that can take a brother from the ghetto and catapult him into stardom. And all of a sudden, right. Goddamn white, white boy telling this story. Right. That's a damn disgrace. Yes, it is. If 10 years from now, right. or 20 years from now, if we got 20 years, yeah. right. let's just say hypothetical. Right. Right. 20 years from now, rap, nobody will even remember the black rapper. That's right. right. They'll be all white. Right. Just like, just like, 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 like C. Freemanel said, watch about, he said 10 years from now, he said about 5 years from now, Afrocentricity will be a white medium. They'll have white professors teaching Afrocentricity mm -hmm. in the in the dog and what you call it. Right. In the uh in the right. colleges and the next thing you you have white Afrocentric speakers. Right. Ooh. They do that shit. They go by the They call out every fucking thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just like when I first heard, you know, when I was young and I heard Big Bang, I thought that was old white people music. <laughs> and I didn't know it too gallant to them, you know, count basic and shit. You see what I'm saying? But then again, like I said, they put this cracker, Benny Goodman, who did what? Took another motherfucker song book. Well, he sold the song book. Oh, what's the boy's name on? The guy, he, he took his song book. Fletcher Henderson, who grabbed Fletcher Henderson from Clark Atlanta University. And, you know, had a ballroom, the ballroom, and did most of his music along with Duke Ellington and them up in Harlem. And then Benny Goodman buys his song book. Plays his music and becomes the king of swing. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> See the shit? You, just like uh, during uh, uh, the, the, the summer, during Elvis time, <laughs> they said Elvis, a man before others. <laughs> when you talk about a sick mentality, you talk about schizophrenia. <laughs> Here's the people, historically, you know what I'm saying? Everybody knows that this is a black music. And they never say Elvis, a man before others. <laughs> but see, that's the, that, but see, you gotta understand, yeah. the white criteria is king. Yeah. They are the authority on thought now. You see, that's why you gotta rebel against all white paradigm and criteria. I don't give a damn, be a green motherfucker, be anybody but a white motherfucker, as the, as the paradigm in which thought is supposed to be. They don't colonize thought. So they say, Elvis a man before others. You see what I'm saying? Elvis a man before others. That's how they do shit. You know what I'm saying? Like now, now they're coming up with half of European fashion, 98% of European fashion was, was brought in by the Moors. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Remember these people was wearing bad skin. <laughs> Motherfuckers wearing bad skin. You know what I'm saying? All that shit. They said they taught them how to dress. So now we'll say, you dress white, you know that shit is Moorish. You see what I'm saying? That, that shit is Moorish. That's interesting here. There's a movie. You gotta rent this movie. Because I, 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 I recorded this movie twice. You see what I'm saying? You know, I got some cable. 
That's a damn cable the other month. And I don't record it. I just go in and keep following watch. I just go in and put the movies in and record the shit. I got like 500 movies. And I recorded this one twice. Mr. T. Dr. T. and the women. Movie with Richard Gill in Texas. First of all, these women is wearing the baddest goddamn clothes. It's usually in fashion. But these women in this movie is the cleanest motherfuckers they ever put on a movie. These motherfuckers are, and they see it's a Dionysus movie. Because they dressing up, he's a gynecologist. Here it is. Here's the doctor. That's the Osirian thing. He's surrounded by all these women. But these women, when they go to his office, they are sharp as shit. It's a Dionysus movie. Now in the movie, he's married to Farrah Fawcett. We're gonna get it all, we still be still rolling. But as it comes, that's how we got to go with it. He's married to Farrah Fawcett. <coughs> Farrah Fawcett goes to the mall, these motherfuckers, they, they, I mean, they dress down in this movie. All the women, it's clean as shit. She goes to the, to, to the mall, and she snaps and takes off all her clothes and just rips them off and jumps in this fountain and just jumps around the fountain naked. They go and lock her up, Richard Kidd goes and get her out of jail, take her home. She gets in the bed, he goes to kiss her, and she says, uh-uh. We can't do that no more, that's not nice. So they take her to the doctor, and they talk about she has Hestia complex. And they say Hestia, and the woman start going, dropping to my Hestia is a Greek goddess, the goddess of the home fires, and the goddess of a matronly goddess who turns against love. And when she turns against love, and she turns against, uh, and, and she and she turns against basically adulthood. When she turns against love, she goes into this perpetual virgin, and she goes back to the childhood. So he said this. Said that Fair Foster has gone back into childhood. And I was thinking, I said, well, why did I record him? I said, wait a minute, that's motherfucking black people, <laughs> permanent children. <laughs> you remember they even said that, like uh, uh, Francis Crest said that stuff about we can't deal with certain things in society. So we go back to the childhood. You say, well, I'm not a child, but now look at your family now. Now let me break it down on the conscious level. On the conscious level. You go home, you try to tell black people about consciousness, which is to be an adult, to accept your Africanness, your Moorishness, your leader of the planet Earth. They be like, oh no, I don't want that. I've heard them say, I don't want to hear it. Richard I said, wait a minute, that's fucking black people. Then they went on and said it was middle aged, a uh, uh, high, a uh, uh, mid class, a uh, 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 upper crust women that go through this shit. I said, no, they dropped it when the woman came out and said, motherfucker, revert back to childhood. I said, that's all our people who didn't get with this shit. Right. They're children. Yes. Mm -hmm. They said, oh no, I didn't wonder. I said, she was in the conscious movement and shit. She said, man, I had to get out of that shit. So I said, man, I just, you know, I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to know nothing. <laughs> that shit too much for me. I'm like, well, that's, see, that's a child. That's what they talk. I said, God damn, they're dropping the shit in this movie. They're Hestia complex. I'm a Greek goddess. I'm like, damn, this is about black people. I said, why did I record this fucking movie twice? And I said, I know people like it. Oh, I don't want to hear it. You know, they talk about all the shit. Now, they talk about John Muhammad being a sniper, but when you go into the shit saying, it's the government, no, no, no. Oh, no. Here. 
I should have known that they was going to bring a black person when they have a black man. Right, right. So they did that with Wayne Williams. Right. They had the black chief of police here. Right. So you can't say right. it's us against them. Right. So they put him out there, even have this asshole crying. Right. You get death every fucking day. You don't see motherfuckers' brain flow out. Right. You play the horn. Motherfucker, you are in the D.C. area. They was killing black people. In 1990, they was killing a black man. Two black men a day. Yes, sir. Now, all of a fucking sudden, she gonna come out there and start crying. What kind of fuck is I nigga are you? You were supposed to be a law enforcement. That's the first thing they tell you in any kind of law enforcement. If you in the service, you never let a motherfucker see you lose it. Yeah. You fucked up around. You ever see a damn black a white police officer crowd TV like that shit? I mean, in real life, you think these motherfuckers are dead and cold. You see the police walk around here, you be like, these motherfuckers are like robots. Yeah. You ever notice police hot? They don't have no humanity about them. Right. Yeah. Some right. of them, they just, they just like thrown. Yeah. They don't have no humanity. Right. They're trying to get a twinkle out of you or something. <laughs> Every now and then you'll get one that'll fall off the way. Uh. And he catch hell and be transferred. Uh. <laughs> About that movie Spawn. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Is there some kind of connection where he was just. Who knows? You just got to study it or you got to put the piece together. So I went all of a sudden, for the first time on TV, he started crying. Right. He the only one you see. You don't see that. And, and I was always fucked up in that one tear trip now. Right. And oh, I don't will up at all. <laughs>
plastered all over the place. You see what I'm saying? But like I told you before, the word John in Hebrew is Elijah Muhammad. They always get back at you. They always get back at you. And the point that I, I didn't quite understand was they say they stopped this guy like ungodly amount of times prior to me for that. Right. The restaurant. They stopped him and all this. See, they, they knew. Another, and see, another thing, too, I'm trying to figure out what the Jamaican thing is because the guy who sold him the car was Jamaican. The little boy is Jamaican. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to see what that is. That, that connects up with the tarot card, remember? Huh? The tarot card. What about it? Jamaica? And then they started putting Miss Cleo back in the news. She was from Jamaica. She did Oh, see? That's how you got to put this shit together. Associated with uh, some militant sale in North Virginia that was called Jamaya El Fuco. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So and just it was another Jamaya is associated. Whoever he's associated with is a group that's dealing with the same lineage. Okay. Well, see, all of that all of that stuff coincides. You got to understand. Um. Um. Then the next thing I know, and I'm trying to figure this shit out now, because see, black people have lost their mind, but the man ain't even been locked up hot yet. Right. And his damn family was all over the goddamn TV. Right. Yeah. Family was all over yeah. the damn TV. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you know, Moose came out and said that that car that they was in was no of significance. People had spotted it. They said a caprice, I believe it was. In well, room. it was amazing when they said, the army said, we ain't trained. At first they said, the Pentagon said. The Pentagon is saying, this person, John Muhammad, is an expert marksman. Yeah. Right. Right. NBC News came on there, they said, we got marksmen, but that motherfucker was nowhere near nobody we trained as marksmen. Yeah, sure See what I'm saying? Then this shit hit like the whole cut in the trunk yeah. of the car. Yeah. Yeah. Then they say, wait a minute, now, no, wait a minute. They say, now, then they come back and saying that the hole is the keyhole. <laughs> this, we heard this shit that the hole was the keyhole in the back of the trunk of the car. They took the keyhole out and he put the gun to right up there. Come on. Well, how can the motherfucker see? Yeah. <laughs> I can see a spaceship, oh, man. But it's a damn cool How the hell you gonna be in a motherfucking trunk shooting anything out of it? Just remember now, on one hand, there's always something going on on the yeah. spiritual yeah. that's going on on the physical. Now just remember that. Because mm -hmm. they say, the hand that you destroy yourself with, you're going to deal your own hand. So you want destruction. First of all, the car is blue. And that's cheap. Because when I get into this Labrador thing tonight, his color is blue. It's a police car too. You see, well... It's mm. all souped up soul mobile. Mm. Uh, the car was blue. You see, it's a very key. But then again, everything they're doing here, on another hand, on a, if they want an assassin, that's what they're going to get. It's, it's a lot of things. What's that? And what's up with the, um, him being correlated with the 5% to the Wu-Tang Clan, um, Brain Nubian, and what, what happened? They said that he has some correlation with the 5% and Well, here it goes again. Now, first of all, they said that, well, see, first of all, it's, it's key about the five percenters. See, they had to bring down the five percenters because the five percenters was probably one of the most powerful brand of Islam in the particular aspect was, first of all, they straight up call themselves gods. Mm -hmm. yeah. And number one, you could you didn't have to be a part of the organization. You could be a part of the street and be a five percenter. And most of them was brothers and sisters that was criminals in the aspect of they locked up most of them. Let's put it that way. You see what I'm saying? Which is key because it's all, that's the real underworld when you got a religious aspect, the gods, and they go to prison. And they said they used to write all kind of spiritual disciplines in, Christ, in, 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 in prison. And as a matter of fact, uh, they said that the five percenters, when, 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 they, when they tore down the nation of Islam, the five percenters um, was the one that Farrakhan had to go to to get this, the uh, original yeah. teachings back of Muhammad Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. He had to go to the five percenters and get that and stuff in the seventies to, because you know, what's the name destroyed all that? Well, Steve Muhammad. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So uh, uh, that's the key too. So if they hooked up with them, remember, for a while after uh, 
after the conscious rep died, the five pursuits was keeping it going with the grave diggers, Wu Tang Clan, and your boy uh, Eric B and Rakim and all that kind of stuff here. So all of that stuff there, it 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 it, it meshes together. Right. It's it's very key and it meshes together. All that coincides. So that that's very key. But um, I'm just saying uh. Uh, this whole thing, but here it goes again, this particular piece here is dealing with this article that comes out two weeks before. It said that the black groups are under attack. Now, number one, uh, number one, what you're going to have to do is you got to be on a spiritual level now. Mm -hmm. You got to be on a spiritual level. That's the key now. And um, the light stuff, when we, when we get into that, what, what's the difference between the light and the dark? Because the dark line is now light. I'm going to get into all this. You've got to stick with me tonight because we're going to really get into some, some interesting stuff that's going down. Uh, but in this particular case, if you total co political, you're going down. Mm. See what I'm saying? And if you fake in the funk, you're going down. Mm. But don't get no. Don't, but in here, they talk about the whole concept of your boy, H. Rap Brown, Jamil Alameen. Mm -hmm. Is connected with that, with how they locked him up. You see what I'm saying? But then again, on the other hand, they got your boy Dr. York. He's still in jail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And the reason why he's still in jail is they couldn't get him out on bond is because, see, when they put that minor thing, so they say transport minor, see, once they connect that minor shit with it, they can deny you bail or whatever. They can, they can deny you bond or whatever. They can deny you bail. So he's still in jail. But it's also telling you not to the send aside. The fake motherfuckers, uh, you can't be fake no more in this girl, just a whole other cycle. And you gotta know your magic and be true to your shit, and you can't be fooling the people. Right. And he missed the old side, he done been every messiah among the man and can't get out of the goddamn jail. <laughs> <laughs> and can't get out of jail. You see, and he been every messiah among the man. But see, but you, I'm trying to tell you, but you got to know your science for like. They wrote it on me. They, shit, just last week, last winter, the motherfuckers said, fuck it, we, ain't, we can't spend all this time. They came down to my house, across the street, they went up to the neighbor, they think it was a little street about it, they dug up the sidewalk down the street, and here's my house, across the street, they went three doors down and dug up the sidewalk and was working on some pipes and shit. So I said, oh yeah, you know, and stuff, so, because me, I, at first I didn't catch on because see, first I didn't catch on because I'm just worried whether the motherfucker will cut my gas off. <laughs> so I'm taking this damn gas people and shit. So they rolled on me, cut my shit off in um, October 3rd, they cut my gas off. So I so, so I called my brother because he got the big ass wrench and he came out there and put down and cut my gas back on. So I'm running over the gas. Before I get me a gas can, I said, I'm looking out the window every day trying to see when the gas motherfucker gonna come and put that clamp on my shit. I said, it's getting cold. I said, it's getting cold. And I'm like, Lavado, keep this motherfucker at 75 degrees or 70 degrees. And shit, you know, then it get a little cold, but it always come back up. But I'm like, so I'm looking out there going, oh shit, who the, who the, who the motherfucker's down there? Is that the gas people? So first I'm like, oh shit, the gas people, so I'm scared, you know. You know, you know, until I, until I got my shit straight the other day. And so, so that, that one day, the next day, the motherfucker was in front of my goddamn house, on the other side, dug up the sidewalk. And I said, wait a fucking minute, some shit going on. So I called Achilles, he's like, shit man, they're putting a pipe in your house. It's leading to your house from the water thing so they can kill you through the fucking water. Mm -hmm. Just send some fucked up shit through there. Mm -hmm. So they went down the street today, went out there after niggas and stuff. But see, the stuff is spiritual. You got to roll with your spiritual stuff. And you got to be power what the Christians tell you. If you're righteous and pious and dealing with that praying on your knees bullshit, right. they can do what they want with you because you wind up on their side. You got to find the deep and dark, all things dark and deadly. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Now, all of a sudden, they're running four planes. Two planes in the daytime and two, two planes at night. You see what I'm saying? Uh, two planes in the daytime and two planes at night. Now, what's happening is your cells are now mutating and the only thing can save you now. It's no kind of shit. It's one thing. Water. Lots and lots of water. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of water. Because now people have been reporting all around the country, black people are coming down with these stomach aches. Mm -hmm. They're coming down with these stomach aches and be damned about to die. 
That's because the cells are now mutating, and that's the kundalini energy rising, and you've got to drink water. Lots and lots of water. That's the key. That was, that's what will save you now. It's like, and we got some other remedies also, too. We got some other remedies also, too, as we go on. But the key here is, that's the way they're moving and stuff because they are scared. Mm -hmm. Now, we got them by the balls now. We really got them by the balls. This is no more theory. True. That's right. Because when this lava don't motherfucker rose, like I said, the first thing you did is burn down my man's soul bathroom and stuff like that. And he did, and, and we did a ritual to him in Auckland and he just came and he just been fucking up shit. But we had to, we had to roll with the punches because that's how this, 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 this energy is coming through and they are scared. But it's now showing up in print. Mm -hmm. Now just stick with me, I'm going to give you some, some bibliography and, and some stuff to deal with also too. So uh, just stick with me um, as we go on. I just want to give a, a couple other things also. Uh, going right along, let's see here. So uh, now remember now, the whole concept here is that they are still, uh, they are still um, dealing with, um, they are still dealing with this Iraq war. That's one of the keys. Because the war, and we're going to go into this because this war, there's a spiritual aspect of why they're going up into to Iraq. It has nothing to do with the oil. That's the first thing we think. Oh, most people are it. You know what I'm saying? All that shit. They got oil wells capped. They drill oil in the fucking ocean now. This ain't about no oil. But we'll get into that in a few minutes and stuff. Uh, in a few minutes. First of all, one of the keys here now is Mount Etna erupted in 2001, in July, and Mount Etna erupted again last week. Now, Mount Etna is very key because the energy, the Labrador energy that I'm going to get into tonight, is coming uh, in Greek mythology. They trapped the god Typhon under Mount Etna. Mm. Then they had, okay, all of a sudden they had this earthquake last week, week before last, and Mount Etna started erupting again in Sicily. You see what I'm saying? And this time, it starts fucking them crackers up. You see, very key. It started erupting again. Mount Etna, uh, very key that you understand it. That's not by accident. There's some spiritual things going on. I just want to go through some things before we get into this thing here. Uh, I'll go through some things here. Uh, let's see here. Let's see some other things. Because I, had to, I covered a lot of stuff. I'm going to get a couple of things with the 9 11 thing right quick. Now, I knew. I said, they, now, they had all this 9-11 shit. First of all, how it is, you know a people, they really got people under mind control, whereas last year everything was fucking Bin Laden. Mm -hmm. This year they don't even mention the motherfucking name. Everything is, they don't from Bin Laden to Saddam Hussein. When they, when they mention the day, oh, he probably dead. Oh, you taking that for well, wait a minute, hold on, huh? Wait a minute. Really? <laughs> that ain't never been no excuse for some nigga on the run. You right. 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 They look at that nigga, 10 to 15 years. You mean to tell me a year later? Right. They ain't forgave OJ in mm -hmm. fucking right. right. six years. Right. You know what I'm saying? They still hurt from that shit. Yeah. But all of a sudden, Bill Lotton, he blow up a whole building. He says, well, we ain't worried about it. He dead. You see what I'm saying? In the mind control, people say, wait, but hold on now. You're going to war again this year. You went to Afghanistan. And blew up Kansas that was already bombed out. Yeah. <laughs> right. Pakistan or wherever. And, 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 and you know. Uh, well, how much was it? Fifty billion dollars to blow up all that shit last year. Mm -hmm. No big line. You know what I'm saying? I thought you was close, you was you had you had video VCR tapes of the motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Video tapes and stuff. Now all of a sudden his name is forgotten. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, it's about some dog on. Uh, uh, what you call it? It's about some Saddam Hussein. Now I said they say they're gonna do the 9/11. So I said, oh, you done had all these little shows on 9/11 the year after. I said, okay, then. I said I'm gonna watch the HBO one. Cause HBO ain't gonna come with some stuff. They gonna always come with the real nitty gritty stuff. HBO is a real sinister. Uh, that's the one. 
If you don't get nothing, get the HBO out of cable thing, because they're real son of stuff. And they fuck over black people all the time. I'm going to give you some stuff in a few minutes. So I said, watch the HBO. HBO. And the first thing I said, watch and see if they have some footage that is pristine clear. Now remember last year they ain't had that shaky shit because you're supposed to call people off guard. It's not like they had a, a, a movie. It's, it's supposedly, we know the deal. You know, FEMA moved in the day before. And all, you know what I'm saying? FEMA moved in the day. And what was that that you said? What was that you said about um, Oklahoma? Oh, Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, Timothy McVeigh. Uh, there was, I'm trying to think, there's, there's a doctor who, his name is jo there's a Joylin. Oh, God, what's his name? I can't think of his name. Um, but there was a book written. There was a book written about two years or so before the bombs. The bombs. Oh, oh. The bomb. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but the governor's brother wrote a book called The Last Jihad. And in the book, the, bomb, the, the guy uh, bombed uh, the same building. Uh -huh. He bombed the same building. The guy's name was Thomas McVeigh. Oh, in the book. In the book. In the book, exactly. See, they always give you some Ooh. shit. They, all, they, always, they always give you the stuff. The photo stuff happens. So we knew that they had all this. Now, Dick Gregory said at the conference that uh, two years before that, they had a man on a tightrope act suspended between the buildings, and he was doing a tightrope. Remember they said that your guy run face in and he locked his ass up? He was up there with a tightrope, and he said that the government was surveying the building when they had him up there doing that shit. They had these ropes and shit. They had this motherfucker up on the ropes. And they said what it was is it was, they were surveying and stuff, and they wanted to draw your attention away from why they surveying all this. They were doing a lot of work up in that stuff, and so they had the whole tightrope bang going down. You see what I'm saying? You see? And they locked this fool up because he was walking some wire. They said they were surveying the shit then. But I said, I'm going to watch this HBO. They're going to have, I said, Spirit say, if they got clear footage, then you know, well, we already know it, but this is more evidence. That they, how, if you didn't know something was going to happen, how you going to have a cinematographer out there? Right. Man, and they showed the plane hit this damn building. It looked just like they took the motherfucker right off along with the wind. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I mean, it was just clear and beautiful. I said, damn, I didn't see this uh, footage. <laughs> now, now, what is it? Why is it they got clear footage and it was supposed to be a spur of the moment thing? Because, right. you know, the shit was all set up. I said, look at this. You, you see what I'm saying? And then they, then they imploded the whole building. Now, this is key. After that, the History Channel had one on. Uh, and they had that maker, the, the person who designed the building, a Japanese guy, designed it in 66. He started designing it actually in the early 60s. He got the, the contract in 66 and they started. He said, we designed it to take a 747 hit. Mm. <laughs> now wait a minute, if you designed the building to take a 747 hit and a plane that's smaller than a goddamn 747 yeah. hits the building, if it's designed to take the hit, what the hell is it doing falling and both buildings falling like that? I said, look at this here. You see. Now, as I said, I, I might have said it in the movie, said it in, in the last lecture in April, the, the one that, that like Gilbert Blair said that he, uh, to put this in the tape, that uh, um, they had a, 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 some firefighters that went to, uh, some firefighters that went to, um, went from Chicago to, uh, went to, from Chicago to New York to help out. And those particular firefighters, um, the particular firefighters, um, went down in the World Trade Center. They went down below where all those people, and they said that they saw underground these bodies wrapped up in white sheets as far as the eye could see, and they were still living. Mm. They were still living. And they told them, what you doing down here? Get up out of here. And they let them go because it was firefighters. And they went back and reported it to Delbert Blair. But it's interesting here because even Valentine said it was something that had something to do with the Queen of England, blood and bodies, and they owed the Queen of England all this stuff. And she said, you paid with it in bodies. Now this is very key because the whole sacrificial thing is very key with this thing here. The human sacrifice and all that is in the Mahabharata. There's wars and stuff. And uh, there's wars and it has something to do with the gods. Now stick with me.
with this thing here because it has something to do with a galactic warfare going on also. Mm -hmm. And it took me a while to really put it together. I heard these reports because when I heard one of the physical reports, I also was hearing spiritual reports. Now, spiritual reports, and I'll get into that in a few seconds. So, um, there were these great sacrifices that was actually going on. Now, on the spiritual aspect, apparently, they knew that during 9-11, that day, because I'm saying, well, I'm trying to find out, if they planned this, how could it be spiritual if they planned it? But, it took me a while to try to understand what was going on. They knew that on that date, 9 11, because clearly they had all the spiritual stuff on the internet on what that 9 11 all meant. But they knew on that day that supposedly, now to, 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 to piggyback off of I got two or three psychic channels. I got one from the sister in California. She said, No, I saw something different. I saw the sky open up and these two entities, light and dark, step out. Only people reporting about that in the paper was, um, the Weekly World News was one of them. And they talked about that. When I was in South Carolina, one brother stepped up to the table when I was speaking, and he said, I know I saw something there. I saw the sky open up, and I saw a light in, in, um, um, entity and a dark entity. He said it was like a galactic warfare. Mm. He said, uh, he, and he said that. So I had to ponder and see what was going on. How could they plan something and it also be something spiritual going on? But then I realized what was going on. Remember, the devil always know when shit gonna happen before we do. Apparently, they knew that at that particular moment, and that particular day, that 9-11, there was some kind of porthole that was gonna open up. There was some kind of porthole that was gonna open up. They already had that black hole out there. And there was some type of porthole that was gonna open up, and they knew that they had to, in front of the porthole, that was going to open up at those two towers. You see what I'm saying? You get your, your movie Two Towers that's coming out this year, mm -hmm. the second installment from the Lord of the Rings. <coughs> you see what I'm saying? They knew that at, at that particular moment, they built it around it, it was a porthole while they built the two towers. They knew that one day this porthole was going to open up, and they knew when it opened up, they weren't going to be able to explain this thing. Mm. They wouldn't be able to explain it away. So as a result, so as a result, what happened was, is they staged the plane and all this kind of stuff, the explosion and all that shit, in front of it, so the people wouldn't see it. So let's say it might have been a loud, loud thunder, or some loud, loud, loud sonic boom, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't be able to explain this thing away. So what they did was they had the planes to crash, and they put forth their lockdown mechanism, what they was going to do anyway. They put it, they were going to do it anyway. They put it forth at that particular time, and that, that particular day and time. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Meanwhile, they said also, if they got any motherfucking subversive big mouth speakers in the area, put them all down on it too. And that's when I had to wrestle my way out of New York. You see what I'm saying? So that was uh, uh, about that particular photo. That's interesting. They got a movie that came out in 1996 called X, an animated. Japanese movie called X. And in this particular Japanese movie, they talk about in Tokyo, the setting is Tokyo, and they got certain buildings. And these particular buildings are buildings that are designed to keep certain energies and force fields to protect Tokyo. And if these buildings fall, they open up a porthole and a shield. Mm. And these forces can come through and take the earth. Now, now bear with me with this shit, because this thing, I'm telling you, uh, never before. It's, I mean, I've been close before, but I ain't never been so close before until this thing is real now. <coughs> and ever since 9 11 has been coming, I'm telling you, we are close to this shit. We are very close. Now, going on. So, for some reason, it had something to do with a particular porthole. It had something to do with, uh, um, uh, they needed to distract people from something that was happening spiritually. Now, supposedly, what happened, 
Now we can trace it now. What happened supposedly was that after this porthole opened, they said it was literally a million spirits or souls that came through that porthole a day. And I talked about all that before. Which culminated into something that you can physically see now, which is the black waters. Very key. So we're not talking about um, something that's a theory. They got the black waters all over the world. They just told the people in Florida. They, they, they had a bunch of it on the internet, but they stopped reporting this particular stuff. I got one of this far for 2000, they talked about it. They're really giving really stupid information on it. But we'll try to explain it as we go on, on what's really going on. And when I was in Cleveland, Ohio, I was telling them about the Black Waters about three weeks ago. They were like, oh, we got the Black Waters. The Black Waters is in the Cleveland River. Mm. So this shit is all over the world. And stuff. So we're not. So what we're dealing with now is not theory. We're dealing with reality. Let's go on and stuff. Because now this is interesting. Now I try to understand, and 